Hey, yo, what up? It's your boy. Imagine that for four entire years, over a thousand days of your life, you spend dedicating yourself to perfect this one true passion that you have. The one thing that makes you incredibly happy and in turn makes everybody else really happy as well. There's nothing but a positive. You get to be at your creative peak while at the same time making things that you enjoy and other people enjoy as well. Now imagine then that some mysterious unknown entity comes along and rips that all away from you while you're asleep. Only for you to wake up the next day to find out that that thing that you've been working on for four painstaking years of your life has just disappeared in an instant. Well, that's what unfortunately happened to this Japanese YouTuber with over 1.3 million subscribers. This is Saito Naoki Sensei, who, for those of you who don't know, is not just a reputable YouTuber who has made some really creative, cool, fun projects in the past four years, but is also a really reputable illustrator. So reputable, in fact, that he has his own Wikipedia account, which uh, I will very quickly read, but he is a regular contributing artist for the Duel Masters Trading card game, the Pokemon trading card game, and Hatsune Miku merchandise. He's also the main illustrator and character designer for the game Dragalia Lost, and as a manga artist, he wrote and illustrated a spin-off of the Grappler Baki series. Essentially, this guy is the real deal, and I've actually stumbled upon a couple of his videos in the past. Uh, he had made a couple of videos of him kind of putting in his uh, two cents as a professional illustrator to, you know, look at other people's art, look at other famous artworks out there and being like, okay, so here's how you can improve on your art, you know, but it done in not so much like a, a not, not in like a commentary or like critical way, but in like a really wholesome way of like, this is how I make my art process and this is the things that you can learn from me. But just the other day, he woke up to his main channel with again, over 1.3 million subscribers, just completely gone in an instant. And to this day, him and his audience and everybody who stumbled upon this tweet, which currently has uh, 7.4 million views on Japanese Twitter, has no idea why his channel disappeared. So he actually went on to his second channel, Saito Naoki 2, which I will leave in the description below because, uh, you know, by the end of this video, hopefully you'll feel really freaking sorry for this guy, as did I when I looked into this story, to basically do a short little live stream, about a 53 minute live stream, basically telling his audience, hey, so uh, my channel just like kind of vanished. It got terminated overnight and I have no idea why it was the case. And he's smiling in this live stream right now, but at the beginning of the live stream, he was basically saying, hey, um, you know, I might be smiling now, but uh, when I found out that morning that the thing that I've been working on for four painstaking years of my life as a side project to my, you know, current occupation of being a, a, a professional illustrator had just vanished overnight is just like, yeah, it, it, it broke him. And uh, as a, a fellow content creator, yeah, I would be pretty freaking devastated as well if that happened to me. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Joey, how did this happen? Was there an explanation? Did he get his channel back? Well, let me do a quick little run through of what he explained in this live stream right here, which, you know, as of right now, doesn't have any English translation. So hopefully I'll be able to be the, the bridge between the gap of the you English uh, speakers and the Japanese audience. Essentially to this day, about a week after his uh, channel got terminated, he still has no idea why it got terminated, but he does have some clues as to how it might have got his whole channel terminated. For one, when he received the email, usually, uh, for those of you who don't know, when you get uh, a strike on your channel or you get any kind of termination emails, which is already makes my heart rate increase just thinking about potentially getting one, because that is a fear that all YouTubers have to live with every single goddamn day, because YouTube is the type of platform that loves to set rules and then changes rules without telling their creators and expects their creators to keep up. But essentially, when you get your channel terminated, for the most part, YouTube gives you a reason that they have formulated. And the reason for Saito Naoki Sensei's termination of his YouTube channel is that supposedly he broke rules concerning violent or sexual depictions of children. Now, hold on. You don't run into the conclusion of, oh, again, another manga artist, Japanese illustrator that is drawing CP, blah, 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 blah. No, because this time, it's very different. Mind you, this is a guy who does professional illustrations for Hatsune Miku merchandise and Pokemon card trading game. Do you think that an illustrator like that is dumb enough to draw things that depict children 
in explicit ways? No, of course not. In fact, in the live stream, uh, Saito Sensei actually thoroughly explained as to how careful he actually was in the depiction of his illustrations on YouTube. He actually, he actually puts it very beautifully. Essentially, he said along the lines of, I understand that as a Japanese artist, the character designs and the general anime aesthetic that is drawn is not necessarily to the same standards as Western illustrations in the sense that a lot of characters in the anime style drawing is usually depicted a lot younger just based on the kawaii aesthetic. And if you've watched enough anime and you've read enough manga, you've seen enough Japanese illustrations, you know, that is a point that, yeah, is, is, is pretty true. Just because the character looks cute and is depicted perhaps a little bit younger, that doesn't necessarily mean that the character itself is young. Now, granted, yes, there are artists out there who do draw that kind of stuff, but they're also not running a YouTube channel and getting uh, jobs from the Pokemon company and Hatsune Miku. So let's put that to the side for a second and say that this illustrator right here is pretty innocent when it comes to the things that he draws. And he explained in this live stream that because I do understand the cultural differences of maybe my artwork getting the wrong impression with the Western audience and especially with YouTube, that is a Western company, he in his videos was always very, very careful with how he would go about drawing in his videos. So much so to the point where he actually gave an example of how he actually changes the drawing order that he does of characters to his usual stuff in the sense that, I mean, I'm not an artist myself, so I don't know how different this might actually be. You know, artists watching this video, you can let me know down in the comments below. But essentially he was so careful in the way that he was drawing in his videos to the point where he would actually not draw the skin tone first in case the overabundance of the skin tone would set off red flags in the YouTube algorithm. So what he would actually do in the coloring process is that he would actually color in the clothes first and then the skin last. So clearly this guy is fully understanding of just how broken and automated and all encompassing the YouTube algorithm is when it comes to de depicting that kind of stuff and to detecting oh, there's too much skin tone in this video, so it must be something sexual, which is obviously bullshit. But then he brings on an interesting hypothesis. When he went to go check the existence of his unfortunately now gone main YouTube channel, he also noticed that the Google Drive account that was linked with the email that he created his main YouTube channel on was also terminated. Not only that, it was terminated for the exact same reasonings that YouTube gave for his main YouTube channel. And so looking at that, he created this hypothesis as to why YouTube might have deleted his channel in the sense that Google Drive's terms of service is very similar to that of things like Google Photo, Gmail, and YouTube, obviously, because it's all owned under Google. For those of you who have never made a YouTube channel before, basically, whenever you make a Google email account, which you then use to create a YouTube account, naturally, along with it, you get all sorts of other additions, including a Google Drive account. What he did as a previous segment on his main YouTube channel was that he would actually open up his Google Drive account for audience participation based videos in the sense that audiences who watched his videos could go onto his Google Drive account and essentially put up their own artwork for audiences to share, basically as like a file sharing service for his audience to look at other viewers art and go, hey, that's some pretty cool artwork. And for him himself to collect artwork from audiences to then turn into YouTube videos. So the hypothesis that he brings up is a really interesting one and is one that I've never really heard of up until now is that he reckons that there must have been a couple of viewers who unfortunately put up some artwork that might have set off the Google algorithm into looking at it and going, yo, that is some CP, That that that's, that's that's depictions of children that is not cool on our service linked to this particular Google email, which is then linked to this particular YouTube channel. And so with the possible breaking of uh, terms of service of Google Drive, that then caused a chain reaction for not only his Google Drive to get terminated, but also his email to get terminated, which then turned his YouTube channel to be terminated as well. I've seen and heard a lot of examples of YouTube channels getting terminated for breaking terms of service, whether it's intentionally or accidentally, but I have never 
in my 10 years of making content, never heard of a case of a YouTube channel with over 1.3 million subscribers getting terminated manually. And, and this was not by accident, by the way. Apparently he contacted his YouTube partner and they actually confirmed that yes, it was actually manually deleted because of the breaking of the terms of service, supposedly. But I've never heard of a YouTube channel getting manually terminated because somebody or something broke the terms of service in Google drive that was connected to the email of the YouTube account. Like that is that that that's some like fucked up domino effect thing that I didn't think was possible. And granted, this is just a hypothesis, but considering that he was very, very careful on his actual YouTube channel and the contents he would put up on his YouTube channel and that he is also an artist with a giant reputation working with the likes of the Pokemon company and Hatsune Miku. He, he's smart enough to not purposely break the terms of service in that sense. And he explained that in this live stream and his audience who was watching live at the time were like, okay, that makes a lot of sense, but it's also some bullshit because supposedly there is a true culprit out there or maybe a number of true culprits out there, whether intentionally or accidentally uploaded some artwork onto his Google Drive account, which unfortunately Google looked at and went, hey, that is uh, that 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 is a no-go, my friend. That is a breaking of the terms of service. You will not even get a warning. You will just be completely shut down right then and there. No repercussions, no chance of getting your Google Drive account back, nor getting your YouTube channel back, which is just like a nightmare for any content creator. Like, could you imagine this thing that you've been working on for over a thousand days of your life just vanishes because some unknown person uploaded artwork to your Google Drive account? Isn't, isn't that, isn't that fucked up? That's like you losing your job because somebody sent you a text message that was a bomb threat in a joking manner. Like, like it, it, it's that far-fetched. Like, it, it, it has nothing to do with you. It was completely out of your control and it wasn't even serious. And yet everything you worked up till that point is just gone because of that. And after I saw this live stream, as you can see, I was, uh, you know, watching it over again just to make sure that I got all the facts in this video correct. After watching through this live stream again, it was like really freaking depressing. YouTube in 2023, even after all of these algorithm changes and all of this like fail safes to make sure that content creators are safe as long as they follow the rules that YouTube set and that they won't get their shit terminated accidentally or intentionally just then suddenly pull this shit out of nowhere is is really terrifying and very frustrating because again this guy is an incredibly reputable artist who is completely innocent. He has almost half a million followers on Twitter and just does some really cool videos like these, for example. How, how could you look at this and being like, oh yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely violent depictions of, of children right there. Like, like how could you... <laughs> I don't I don't understand where the, the bar is. He did artwork for an official Pokemon card and he's done this for many, many years now. So it's just insane that someone who is on all you know intents and purposes innocent just suddenly get uh, the, the belt from YouTube because of something that he had no control over. It's just, it's just really freaking sad. So in the meantime, um, I'm going to leave the link to his second channel here down in the description below because uh, he's just a really cool artist who was just making and trying to make all sorts of really cool videos. And luckily he said that he had backed up all of his main channel videos. So I, I guess he's going to start uploading them onto this backup second channel that he only created because his main channel disappeared. Like he, he, he basically had to start this new channel from zero subscribers and luckily because of the controversy that this has created he's already at 70,000 subscribers which is fucking great I'm super happy for him but this is a big reason why you see a lot of YouTube channels like me for example have second channels like the one you're currently on right now it's because we constantly are living in this fear of what if we accidentally anger the YouTube gods and all the stuff that we worked on for a big portion of our life just disappears like that and we then there's nothing we can do about it. It is honestly terrifying. And honestly, if you are a fan of a YouTube channel, you know, regardless of how big or small they are, and they have a second channel, like what I have currently right now, I implore you to go and follow them on their second channels as well, because stuff like this could happen. 
to anyone. So yeah, really unfortunate news. Uh, YouTube just being dumbasses again, as they always have been. And uh, I hope Saito Sensei gets his channel back at least, you know, because this, and, and honestly, in all fronts, fucking ridiculous. And YouTube just really needs to make sure to like, at least give like people a warning, you know, because like not everyone is guilty on the spot, you know, like, like it's th this whole mentality of like guilty until proven innocent. And even when you're proven innocent, this whole mentality of, oh, it's too late. The deed's already been done. It's just fucking ridiculous because these, this is like people's livelihoods you're putting at stake here. It's absolutely insane that people, innocent people like this, have to run into problems like this all the goddamn time because YouTube's system doesn't know what it actually wants to do. So yeah, that was just a video where I wanted to highlight that. Again, uh, you know, he, he has a video up right here uh, called Illustration Advice 118. This guy made 118 videos of just this type of illustration advice video all gone. So if you want to go check it out, um, then again, I've left the link to his second channel in the description below. So go give him your support and uh, let me know what you guys think about this story down in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smack my face right here to subscribe to the channel. Let's keep making big channel number go bigger over here next to my head. A couple more videos you can check out if you enjoyed this one and the links to my social media, as well as my YouTube shorts and TikTok pages and my Patreon if you'd like to support me directly all down in the description below. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace.